The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Now, in the context of the law, a testimony is a statement or a declaration of a witness on the oath or affirmation. Now, if you have to go to court and then you want to be a witness to a case, if you are a Christian, they will give you the Bible to swear by the Bible. If you are a Muslim, they will hand you over the Quran. If you don't want any, you just lift your hands in affirmation. You are telling the whole court that what you are going to say is nothing but the truth. So you are going to testify on the oath. And whatever you say is going to factor in the judgment. If for any reason they found out that you came to lie on the oath, you can also be jailed. Now listen. God himself has also given a testimony. Can you imagine that? That God has sworn by oath? Now, concerning his son. 1 John chapter 5 from verse 9. 1 John 5 verse 9. We accept human testimony. But God's testimony is greater. Because it is a testimony of God which he has given about his son. And this one is big letter S. Jesus Christ. Not us, but Jesus Christ. So God has given a testimony about Jesus. The next verse says this. Whoever believes in the son of God, accept this testimony. Or, if you accept this testimony, then you have believed in the Son of God. The reverse is also true. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. How many of us want to hear the testimony that God has given about his Son? Yeah. The next verse will tell you the testimony. And now look at it. Shall we read together? And this is the testimony. Colum. Colum means that he's going to tell us. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Full stop. Do you see the full stop? Yeah. You don't add anything to it. God has given us human beings eternal life. And this life is in his son. As against the many others. The next verse says this. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. This is the testimony that God has given, sworn on oath. Unto the whole humanity. And the Bible says that this is public. This is God's testimony. Now listen. This story. This testimony. This good news. This God's forbearance. Making way for man's sin to be forgiven. This arrangement must be told. The sinner should be confronted with this new arrangement. That God has made some arrangement for his escape of sin. God has made the arrangement. And this gospel must be preached. This arrangement must be told. I'm glad when you were taking an offering, I saw many young people in this church. 
and my heart was glad. Amen. Young people, you didn't just come to church to sing and to dance. This story must be told. Amen. This arrangement must be told. Amen. Now listen, how many of you believe that you are children of God? You are children of God because you believed God's testimony, is that right? Amen. Now, if you are married to an unbeliever, who is that unbeliever? If you believe and you are a child of God, and you are married to an unbeliever, and the unbeliever has not be believed, whose son is that unbeliever? Now, just hold it. Just think about it. I can't tell you the way I want to say it, but think about it. This is how serious the redemption story is. If you fail to believe, the holiness of God cannot accept you. And this story ought to be told. This arrangement has to be explained to the world. None of us should come to church and keep quiet. Now, on a good Sunday morning, if you like, around 9.30, 10, just take some stroll around the carnation market and look at the many people who are there who don't think church. They don't think church, but we say Ghana is a Christian community. We need to tell the redemption story. Shall we just bow down our heads for a moment? And let us pray that God help me to tell this story. Help me to tell it to my father. Let me tell it to my mom who is not born again. Let me tell it to my husband or my wife. Let me tell it to my children. Because God's testimony is God's testimony. He has declared it on oath. And nothing will change it. Shall we pray together? If you like, you can rise for a moment. Rise for a moment and let's pray. Let's pray just within some minutes. Shall we pray? Basonde. Biriando. Mosokotonde. Masan. Spirit of the living God. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. That we will tell of this redemption story in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please sit. Now, what is gospel? Ordinarily, when something or a statement is referred to as a gospel, we mean something or a statement regarded as true and implicitly believed. So when something is true and that is implicitly believed, that is gospel. Hold that one to your spirit. Number two. Ordinarily, when we say gospel again, what we mean is a doctrine, a teaching regarded as of prime importance and ought not to be altered. When the doctrine or a teaching is regarded as of prime importance, that which ought not to be altered, that one too is gospel. So I'll put the two together. So when we say gospel, we mean something regarded as true and should be implicitly believed. Then we are also saying that that which is of prime importance and ought not to be altered. What is the gospel in the Christian setting? 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Are we together? Yes. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, now, the Apostle Paul is going to answer the question of the dead. And he begins with this one. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, because the gospel from what we studied acts to be received by faith, and on which you have taken your stand. The next verse, please. By this gospel, by this gospel, not any other, T 
H-I-S gospel, you are saved. But he put a comma there. And then he went on and said, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Because he sees that the people are being confused because of the question of the resurrection of the dead and how the body will rise from the dead and stand in judgment. They are being confused by some supposed uh, teachers of the law. The next verse now talks about what the simple gospel is. For what I received... I pass on to you as of first importance. We have defined the gospel ordinarily as something that is of prime importance. So Paul is saying that for what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. So he's going to talk about gospel. Now look at the column. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Next verse. That he was buried, comma, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. The gospel is this. The simple gospel is that Christ died for our sins. And he says, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that on the third day he was raised from the dead. According to the scriptures. This is the simple gospel. And it must be told. This is the simple gospel. The good news. And it must be told. Two things we ought to do with the gospel. Two things that we ought to do with the gospel. Number one, the gospel must be preserved, not altered. The gospel must be preserved. Every generation, every church should jealously guard the gospel. No adulteration, no additives. Now, if you want this church to really grow, stay in the gospel. Don't, don't be adding anything. You don't need anything. To top it up. As, don't give in to the demands of the days. And the demands of the people. Stay in the gospel. Number two. The gospel must be preached. So two things. Preserve it. Preach it. So I will now talk about preserving the gospel. Let's go to Galatians 1 verse 6. Galatians 1, 6. I'm astonished that you are quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to what? A different gospel. No generation of believers should allow this to happen. Nobody should turn to any other gospel. The next verse, verse 7 says this. Which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into what? Confusion. And are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. And that should not be allowed. Verse 8. Now, shall we read together? But even if we, that is he himself included... Or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you. Let them be under God's curse. Why is the apostles so serious? Want to curse people and <laughs> take them to hell. Why? I will explain it to you. I've even said it. If you go back to what I've said, you understand why he's saying that let them be a curse. The simple reason is this. God has sworn on oath and declared Jesus as Lord. Who is an angel? Who is a preacher? Who is a demon to bring another gospel? And the Paul is saying that if anybody attends, let the person be cursed. 
That is what it means. That you are trying to pretend what God has said. Under oath, then be a curse. That is what it means. Now, but God did not just make this statement concerning Jesus. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the right to become the Savior of the world. He gained it as due return. You see, God didn't just want money to say, yes, we are No, no, no. Jesus gained the right to be the Son of God. Philippians 2, from verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. The next verse says that who, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. The next verse, rather, he made himself nothing. But taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. And the scripture says, even death on the cross. Now, how many of you are in verse 9? What word begins verse 9? What does therefore mean as a result? Consequently, Following, God exalted him to the highest place. So he did something that merited his exaltation. So he gained it on due return. God placed him to the highest place and gave him what? It is the King James that you use. Eh. But you see, it is the name that is above every name. You see, God didn't give him a crown. Neither did he give him anything. You see, because your name is your greatest asset. Yeah. And then when you mention a person's name, all that is in that fellow zooms out of the name. That is how powerful names are. So people with powerful names, even in death, their names still work. How many of you know Mr. Bean? You see that you are laughing. But Mr. Bean is not here. You mention Mr. Bean and who he is zooms out of the name. That is why God, in his all wisdom, gave Jesus a name. What your name can do, you see, what you can do when you are in person, your name can do the same thing. Yeah. That is why many a times we, you see, when you go to, uh, the banks. You don't meet certain people. Yet they, they redraw money. Those of us who don't have great names, we queue. But they don't queue. They, see, they go there with their names. Around 4.30 when they know that the bank is closed. They will just call. And then somebody picks the receiver and says, hello, can I help you? Such people, they mention their names first. I am so, so, and so. Sometimes when you hear their name, you realize you are not qualified to discuss. So can I, can I fetch the manager? Say, so, okay, I'm waiting. Yeah. And then this man will say, I, I hope you, are no, you have not closed. He knows that they have closed. And then he says, I hope you have not closed. And the manager says, yeah, yeah, yes, sir, no, sir. Yeah. You know, the man is using his name. The name will bring him that money without the man going there. That is why when Peter and John met this man at the beautiful gate, he said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So the name is enough. The name of Jesus is enough. 